everyone, and welcome to Snapshot 22W46A. Yes, I am a piglin, and yes, my ears flap when I walk. This is a feature that was actually communicated by Mojang earlier in the week. They released an article explaining this feature that's going to be in this snapshot, which includes the new piglin head. I think this is a really great idea to announce some of the things that are coming just a little bit in advance, and I think Mojang are actually doing a really great job with communication this snapshot. So in short, this wasn't a surprise, but once I put it on my head, I thought it just looked amazing. And if you wanted a little side-by-side -side comparison, well, here it is. This is the default size of mob heads, but here you can see it's a little larger and it's got some 3D details with the snouts at the front and the ears on the side. And let's see what happens when it's powered by redstone. Aha, look at that, the ears will flap. Now there is another feature that was communicated earlier in the week, the ability for these mob heads to be placed on top of note blocks and then for that mob's ambient sound to be played when pressing the button. And you know that this one is going to be used to troll some friends on a server, right? All in all, a fantastic idea, but potentially missed opportunity? Yes, there is no sound for the Steve head. And something was nagging me. Yes, I forgot to search skull as well. I knew I hadn't laid all of them down. So ambient sounds for the wither skeleton and the regular skeleton. So I think it was a great idea for Mojang to communicate these changes to us in advance with an article on the website. What do you think? Was this a good idea? Leave a comment down below. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way you can keep up to date with all of the snapshots and features that come with them. If you did that, thank you very much. Now for a little bit of chaos. <laughs> Constant creeper sounds. Okay, that didn't have quite the charm I was expecting. So if you're looking for a new annoying noise machine, <laughs> that's your best bet right there. Now there is one last thing to note about obtaining this piglin head. Obviously it drops from piglins, but like other mobs in this game, the way to do it is with a charged creeper. Now here in the overworld, the piglin is actually going to turn into a zombified piglin, so you need to time that just right. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. The piglin needs to be next to the creeper when it explodes, that way you will get the head. And as I did try to mention, piglins will turn into zombified piglins when they're in the overworld. So this begs the question, what's the easier way? Getting the piglin to the overworld and timing the explosion correctly, or bringing the creeper to the nether? Personally, I think the latter might be the easier one. So now would be a great time to mention that what you just saw was for 1.19.3, and what you're about to see is for 1.20. So we all know about the chiseled bookshelf, but what's different here, right? <laughs> it should be really obvious, you can now put the books into the slots directly, which is just one of the most amazing changes. Again, this was a big suggestion after Mojang showed these bookshelves, and they've listened and taked it on, and I think everyone's going to be loving this feature right here. And it pretty much works as you'd expect, so if you right-click on the particular slot when you're actually looking at that space on the block, that's how it gets in there. And then to take them out, you just right-click and they go into your hotbar, obviously based on what it is, and you need to right-click with an empty hand too. So I'm not sure if the way redstone interacts with this has actually changed, but due to the chiseled bookshelf changing, it now makes a lot more sense. If I go and click on this slot, we get that much signal strength, right? When I take it out though, it doesn't get updated. So it updates based on the last one to go in. So if I put in the fourth slot, you can see that four lamps light up. Now, if I go ahead and put one here, you'll see it actually reduces to one, even though we've got a book here. So now the functionality is it's the last one. Oh, it actually makes total sense. It's the last slot that you interacted with, right? So if we go to the fifth slot, we get five. And that's if I take a book out or put a book in, it's just the last slot that you interacted with. Droppers can also now interact with this block, and again, this sort of demonstrates the redstone as you put them in, it fills up the slots one by one. Let's go ahead and put a hopper down below. Ooh, see that works a little different than expected. And then for a hopper up above, yeah. I think these changes are pretty fantastic, but yet there's one more thing to show you. So the sound for these three books are basically the same, but the enchanted book, ooh. You hear that? A very small and subtle little difference. So yeah, that's the bookshelf. I am really impressed with these changes. I like it a lot. So communication seems to be a big theme at the moment. And for this next change, it's something that Mojang have actually communicated to us quite some time ago. 
I believe it was in this pre-release dated around five months ago that these changes were first announced. This is all in the name of balancing the game and the community has been given time to adapt to these changes. So Enderman, Skeletons and Wither Skeletons are no longer going to spawn at light level 11. That is the amount that a portal would emit, meaning that these mobs could spawn inside the portal and be immediately moved over to the overworld. This of course lends itself to making very powerful mob farms. So the change was announced some time ago and in 1.19.3 this is going to change. And if we have a little look at the highlighted code here, you'll see that the new spawn light level is seven. It used to be 11, now they will need seven or below to spawn. So in the name of balancing the game, I think this is a pretty fair change. However, they are listening to feedback on this change. So back to 1.20, we have some more bamboo block changes. The texture of bamboo planks has been altered so that it aligns with that of regular planks. You can see this on the stripped blocks too, as it's the same texture. Now last snapshot we talked about a missed opportunity, the top of these bamboo blocks were identical but now you'll see the regular block of bamboo, not the stripped one, now has the green tint and I think that that looks fantastic. It also just makes a lot more sense looking at it too, the way that the texture colour kind of like matches on all sides. And there was something I was scratching my head about last video that I couldn't quite put my finger on. This used to be the recipe for bamboo planks, you would get two of them. But now of course it's known for this and you use this to make those. And the recipe for the hanging sign has also changed. Before it used planks and now it uses the block of stripped bamboo. Of course this puts it in line with all of the recipes for the other types of hanging sign. And on that note, you can now get Glow and Behold. <laughs> Even though I haven't put any text on there, it now works with the hanging signs. And while on the topic of 1.20 and advancements, one thing that never seems to be there from the beginning is when we have a new mob that is breedable, you'll need to do this for the advancement 2x2. So now that we have parrots and the bats, you'll see this contributed to the 2x2 advancement. And going back to 1.19.3, what might be the final set of inventory changes, the redstone tab has had some reordering here. I think I actually preferred how it was before, you had pistons and sticky blocks up the top here, but now you've got your target block and lever. This is also where you'll find minecarts and rails, which are now in tools and utilities too. And lastly, an interesting feature from last week was in creative inventory. When you hover over an item, you can see what category it's from. And this wouldn't work if those items were stacked, which it now does. Next up, let's talk about this tweet from one of the developers of the game, Bartek Bok, showing off some things that are possible in this snapshot, namely pig face blocks and pig face particles. So this might seem like a big deal, some new thing that's doable in the game, but as I understand it, it's just an example to demonstrate some changes under the hood. Here on the website, it is referred to as texture loading changes. And there is a big lengthy technical explanation of this available in the article, which will be linked down below. So for the average player, this means that resource pack loading times should be cut in around half. And if you're a resource pack developer, you may need to update some config files for any custom textures that you have. Now going back to the website, we have another big change this snapshot, which is about telemetry, the gathering of data from your playing experience. And it feels like Mojang have gone to great lengths here to make a lot of what's happening now transparent so you understand all of the data that's being collected from the game. And all of this data is used to understand how players play the game better, but also how to optimize and improve the game's performance quality. And this is an opt-in system. So if you go into the menu to telemetry data, you'll find that by default, your data collection is minimal. You can change it to all. And you may have noticed the scroll bar over on the side here changed when I did that. So listed is all of the different data that's collected. This is for minimal. And unsurprisingly for all, there is a lot more stuff that gets collected in these two bottom categories. There is a link to give feedback, and if you click on this, it creates a .json file with all of your data inside of it. And again, on the website, there's a big article going into lots of detail about all of this. And in the technical changes this week, blocks carried by Enderman now use loot tables to generate drops when killed. This seems to be related to a bug where an Enderman holding powdered snow would drop the powdered snow bucket. So if I kill it now, you see it doesn't drop anything at all. Similar to this, the Enderman can pick up flower pots that can have different things inside of them and they wouldn't actually drop anything. Whereas now you can see they drop the flower pot and the item that's inside of it. 
There is also this new fill biome command. We're going to change the biome within this region. And let's go for jungle so we can see a difference in the grass. Yeah, look at that. It's made the patch of grass in the middle slightly lighter. Let's go ahead and make that selection even larger. And yeah, we get a bigger patch of the jungle tint. Alongside this, the execute command now supports biome in the if statement. So this means you can run a command if you're in the correct biome. Now, if you did or did not know, you can empty a full bucket of water into other water. You can now do that into a waterlogged slab. What would have happened previously is it would have treated it like you're placing the water on the block above. And lastly, there were some broken inventory textures if you were using programmer art, which have now been fixed. And so that brings us to the end of this video. If you're looking for something else to watch, please check out my Minecraft discussions playlist. There's lots of thoughtful content here and the Hermitcraft trilogy has concluded. So if you missed those videos, check them out. And lastly, a big thanks to Missode and Ewan Howell. If either of you are watching, thank you for your help with this snapshot video. And I will see you all soon with another one.